Welcome to Kentucky Gunslingers, and what we have here is a Colt Trooper Mark III, uh, which is uh, one of the, the 357 Magnums produced by Colt uh, that ran alongside the infamous and famous Colt Python. Um, the Trooper ran in multiple different calibers uh, throughout the years, some 38s, even introducing 22s at one point, 22 Magnum. Um, but this is a Mark III, which in the Trooper line started in 1969. So it came along in 1969 and ran through 1982. Uh, this particular model, six inch barrel, nickel plated. Um, this original, you know, wooden grips on it as well that you may recognize some of that grip from the Python too. It does share some looks to the Python. Uh, but there are some differences, which we'll cover a little bit about the strengths and features of this this one today on this bench review. And then we'll obviously do a range review on it in the future as well. Uh, so in 1969, Colt had been running the Python and had been running the Trooper. And um, cost of manufacturing, cost of labor started increasing. So when they released the Mark III, which was the next iteration of the Trooper, uh, this was meant to be a less expensive shooter compared to the Colt Python and a little more accessible to your, your average person. Um, now this Trooper, uh, what's interesting about it is they changed the manufacturing process for it. So the springs inside of it, they use different kinds of springs that were using a, um, that were using a, a corrosion resistance as well. Um, but because of that, no pieces of this trooper are actually interchangeable with its older brothers or sisters. So the older models, uh, none of the parts you could either use on this or, or take parts from this and use for, for older pistols, um, which is interesting. Uh, so you can tell it's got the, the rib that runs all the way top of the barrel, um, adjustable sights as well. Uh, just like every other Colt, you pull back to get the cylinder out. Uh, whereas with Smith's, you push in, so more like the Python. Um, very interesting part of this is it does have a transfer bar. And in 1969, it was one of the first um, production pistol or revolvers that had a transfer bar as a safety. And you can see it too when you pull back. You can see that little bar just go down right there. So it comes up, so it connects from the hammer to the firing pin. Uh, it's interesting. So being a, a 357 Magnum, it will also shoot uh, 38s. Um, this one I've shot both through. I would say it, one feature to it is it's a heavy barreled gun. Like when you handle it, like I'm handling it now, it has a tendency to lean forward in your hand a little bit as it's very he heavy barreled revolver. Uh, because of that, um, you know, the muzzle flip is not nearly as bad as you'll find on shorter barrels or, or lighter revolvers as well. I've been able to return to target very quick on it. Uh, the 357 Magnum round itself doesn't have as much muzzle flip as, uh, as in this as it does in some of my other, my other revolvers. Uh, and shooting a 38 through it is, is about as smooth as you can possibly imagine. Um, now this particular model here does have some you can tell it had kind of a maybe a rough life before it came into my possession you can see some of the the wear on the the nickel plate here um i purchased it for the reason of keeping on my hip when i'm riding on my quad my atv so having it close i've always gravitated toward 357 magnums and I really like the older Colt revolvers, so when I came upon this, it seemed like a no-brainer. Um, I would say a couple of my favorite things about it. Trigger is a, about as smooth as you're ever going to get. You pull the hammer back, typical with Colt, there's no grit, very little pull, and it goes. Um, the other piece is I like the heavier barrel on the 6 inches. Uh, it allows you to, to come back to target very quickly. Uh, the muzzle flip isn't as bad on a magnum round as you'll find on a lighter weight revolver or a shorter barrel. And I absolutely love the adjustable sights. Uh, the adjustable sights are, are great. And it's a great feature to have on anything, obviously, especially if you're going to be changing distances or anything like that. And plus, these older revolvers just have a very cool feel to it. Uh, just a, a piece of history, a piece of manufacturing history, 
and just a romance to them that that I've always gravitated towards. So I would say if you're out and you get an opportunity to see one or to shoot one, I would definitely recommend it. Um, the Trooper was discontinued after the model that came after the Mark III. Uh, it started in 1982 and then was discontinued in 1985, and since then there has been no Colt Trooper. Uh, the Python ran for some years uh, past that. But these revolvers were, were expensive to produce, expensive to produce at the time, and folks started gravitating more toward auto-loading pistols, semi-automatic pistols, uh, rather than revolvers. Uh, so this is a casualty of manufacture cost and obviously decreasing supply and demand but i can tell you firsthand that it, it, it's a a very very beautiful revolver uh shooting and just looking at uh so if you come across one i would say consider if you are looking to purchase but also if you get an opportunity to pull the trigger on one it's definitely worth it you'll find that the trigger is very nice hammer pull is very nice the sights are great and the muzzle flip is really low uh, so with that, definitely hit subscribe, share the video, and let me know if there's any questions.